Today I am going to be making a insulated cover for a beehive, much like this one. So it's made out of insulation boards. This one's been used so it's a bit dirty. So it's basically just a, an insulated cover made out of 50mm builder's insulation board. Just some that I had left over from the cabin build job I was doing. And yeah, it's just to, to give a bit of extra insulation to my wooden hives for the winter. So the size that I'm making it is designed to fit over a brood box with a super on top. So I overwinter my bees on a single brood box and then I have an empty super on top, which has a, uh, well, at the moment it has a rapid feeder in, but as, as I get closer to winter and start insulating the hives, um, I'll fill that super with, in, with insulation as well, uh, the same stuff as this. And I leave a space in there to uh, feed fondant in case the, you know, the weight of the hives goes down towards the spring. So basically this, this fits over the top of the super in the brood box and it goes down to just above the entrance so the bees can obviously still get in and out. And it just sits on top with a, with a weight on the top. I usually just put a brick on the top and that sort of holds it in place. And the hive itself is strapped together underneath with a ratchet strap. The way these are made, it's, it's really simple. It's basically just a case of cutting the side pieces out of my big uh, insulation board over there and cutting a roof piece as well. And then it's all held together with a combination of um, little wooden, um, basically cocktail sticks and this um, metallic uh, tape, basically. So the cocktail sticks, I'll just cut a, a few inches off one and it'll stick in down here and then it'll also protrude into the uh, the, the piece that I'm attaching it to. And that kind of gives it a little bit of structure and then to hold it all together, I just put tape down all the, um, all the edges. And yeah, it's been pretty solid. I used this one all last winter and it looks a bit bashed up, but it's it's still solid enough. And then, I just give it a coat of paint, um, mostly just to protect it from the sun, but also, you know, it looks it looks a little bit more in keeping um, in the apiary if it's green rather than a uh, metallic silver colour. The tools I'm going to need is a saw to cut the, cut the insulation board. I use a Stanley knife just to mark everything up and create a line to cut to. The metallic tape to join the edges and some, I suppose they're kebab sticks, I think I described them as cocktail sticks, but they're kebab sticks really, or uh, wooden skewers. And then just a straight edge to uh, mark my lines. I'm just cutting out the roof section now. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty straightforward to cut with uh, this kind of saw. Um, this is a, just an old saw I'm using. I don't know if it's likely to be uh, damaging to a decent saw or not but yeah it just cuts through it pretty uh, pretty easily that's the roof and the four sides cut so just need to put them together it's just a case of putting everything together now so I'm going to take a uh, skewer and I'm going to snap it in half and then I am going to use it to attach I've already done this one so this skewer here goes down through here into here and same here, there's one here that goes down into here. And every join I'm just going to do like that, so there'll be one that goes through here into here. And that way through there into there. And then at the bottom there and there. And basically just put a reasonable number of the skewers in just to hold it all, loosely hold it all together so that I can then tape the joins. That's one skewer uh, split into two and I've just pushed it into the top of the insulation. Sometimes you can you can push them down, or if not, just a, a tap with the hammer will get them down. 
so that they're through and into the, the other piece of insulation board. So I'll just go around the whole box and put a load of these skewers in and then be able to tape it. So that's it all held together. Uh, there's not really much need to put too many skewers in. I've just put um, one in each corner. So there's one there, one there, one there, one there, one going down there, down there, down there, down there. So each side is just held in um, in two places basically. And it's a pretty rough job. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Once the insulation tape's on, it's, yeah, it's held together pretty well. Uh, that one stood up pretty well. And I've got two others as well that have been absolutely fine through last, last winter. And this is the insulation tape I'm gonna use. It is, I think it's designed specifically to uh, do the joints on these boards when they're used uh, for construction. So yeah, it does the job. Um, this one is, I think, 100 mil, yeah, 100 mil wide. Uh, and I think it's a 45 meter roll or something. And that was, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was under a tenner. I should also say that it's important when you're making these boxes that you don't make them too tight a fit around the hive. Because obviously you want it easy to, to lift on and off. So I've just left a small gap all the way around so that it'll, it'll slip over the hive, no problem. And then I'll show you what I do about that gap um, later on. When I put it onto the hive, I actually fill the gap with uh, pipe lagging just to create more of a uh, insulated uh, void between the insulation board and the sides of the hive. And the other thing I do is I, in order to stop the condensation within the hive forming um, above the bees. The way I think the way to do that, or the way I've found works is if you uh, put more insulation above the bees than you do on the sides of the bees. So um, again, I'll show you later, but the, the basic kind of idea that I use is I use a super on top of the hive, which I also fill with insulation. And what that means is that once the insulated cover's on, there is, it'll be 150, 150 mils of insulation above the bees and 50 mil on each side. And that just means that any condensation doesn't form above the bees and drip down onto them. That's the first side taped up. It's a pretty rough job, but doesn't really matter. And it's a little bit fiddly to do. The tapes is quite easy to work with. You can just tear it. Uh, you don't have to cut it. So I'll just go around all the other, all the other joins, and also around underneath, like you can see on this one, all these bits. And then it will be ready for painting. So that's it. Everything's taped up, and the box is pretty solid now. So the only other thing I'm going to do is I will go along and wherever there's a, a skewer, I'll just go along and put a piece of tape over, over all of the, the exposed skewers. So they've all just been slightly countersunk, so I'll just put a piece of tape over the top to make them waterproof. And then it's good to go, I just need to paint it. In order to paint it, I had a bit of trouble last time getting the paint to stick. Um, I guess because it's a, you know, it's a sm especially on the the tape sections because it's such a smooth surface. So I'm not sure what type of paint I'm going to use this time. I'll try and find some uh, undercoat that's designed to um, to be used on a metallic surface like that. And then I'll probably use one coat of undercoat and then a couple of coats of the green. It's a bit windy today, so I'm sorry if the audio is not very good, but I'm just going to show you how this fits. So the hive is, as I say, it's a brood box and then a crown board and then a super, which is where the, the bees are going to be fed. And the roof remains off, so the, the insulated cover goes on in place of the roof, which means that it's a, you know, a tighter fit around the edges. So we'll put it on now and it just fits over the top like that. The 
entrance is still visible underneath and I'll just put a brick or a, um, just a heavy piece of uh, stone on top to hold it in place and underneath during the winter I, I do ratchet strap the the hive together but the the insulated cover fits on top so the insulated cover isn't ratchet strapped it's just held down by a, a weight on top and I mentioned that I use pipe insulation to fill the void around the, uh, the insulated cover so I just do that on two sides so I push the push the cover over you know there's a gap all the way around but if I push push it over so it's flush on that side and flush on that side then I only need to fill the void on two sides the other the opposite two sides so to do that I just get a piece of pipe insulation and jam it in the gap at the side and that just creates a, a better insulation I think as I say I do use more insulation within the super on top so the rapid feeder comes out and there's space within the super for two 50 mil insulation cut pieces of insulation board which means that there's 150 mil of insulation on top including the insulated cover and 50 mil down the sides and that just means that if any condensation forms in the hive it won't form underneath the or hopefully won't form underneath the crown board and drip down onto the bees and you can see it really doesn't bother the bees at all they've still got access underneath so all I need to do now is get this painted and it'll be ready for the winter.